now it's time for the Coach McFerrin TV show. Presented by Chick-fil-A. Eat more chicken. The show is also supported by AutoZone. From parts to helpful advice, AutoZone has everything you need to get in the zone. AutoZone. Subway. Make it what you want. The Tennessee Lottery. And your Memphis Toyota dealers. Toyota. Let's go places. Welcome in, everybody. Thank you for joining us. You know, life sometimes is like college basketball. There are ups, there are downs, there is good news, there is bad news. The good news, well, the women have won two games in a row. They've looked brilliant doing it. The bad news is, Coach, you lost your best scorer, Jamira Schutz, and you lost your freshman, Lenata Williams, with a shoulder injury, and the news is not good. The news is not good for Jamira. Jamira suffered a... Um, season ending injury in practice one on one defensive drill mm. and um, it didn't look serious at the time next day we got the bad news so she'll be lost for the year but of course she'll get rehab she'll be diligent about it Lynetta Williams will get back um, we're hoping sooner rather than later a little bit of a shoulder injury some nerve involvement got to get the feeling back range of motion she'll get strong again and we'll get her back that's a really good thing too but I think our team's really confident right now. They're really committed to what we're doing, and because of it, we've gotten two wins. Well, to, yeah, to win those two without those two key players is is saying something, and you're watching other people grow up. Your freshman point guard, Ariel Wilson, has really been very steady, and uh, Manjidu continues to be unbelievable inside. Double-double after double-double. I think Ariel Wilson's confidence, we talked about this before, her confidence. I think Madison Griggs' confidence, Jazz Herndon's confidence, and then Dulce coming back and having big nights for us. But Ariel Wilson, she's not a freshman anymore. She's played probably more minutes than anybody on our team. And then Dulce, again, just that comfort level. She now, I think, knows and expects. I teased her last night that we weren't going to feed her if she didn't get a double-double again. Yeah. So I guess that's uh, well, they did that was a complete joke, a complete uh. joke. But... Um, yeah, she's a double double machine for us. When she does that, we're difficult to beat. Well, and the, you guys do a great job of getting the ball inside to her. When you had to in the game against Tulane, the team knew, and they recognized where they had to go. The other person, Herndon. Here's a senior, and I guess she figures her time's running out, but she's starting to play like a senior. And I think she took the injury to Jamira personally. She knows she's got to produce a little bit more. we got to get her back in transition, taking care of the basketball, breaking the press. Those are things that she does for us. And, again, six games to go, seven games to go, she's going to want to win games. And your defense. I love watching your teams play D all through your tenure here. I really have. And, hey, folks, they're, they're shooting under 40% when they play the women. They are, and that's exactly right. Our kids are committed to that. We looked at our numbers going into the conference. We knew the other team's scoring had to go down. When we're committed to that, when, the, when we stay on game plan, it normally pays off. And now 12 and 10, winners of two in a row, and we've got a busy show. Here's what's coming up. We will take a look at three different games, ECU, Tulsa, and the uh, nice win against Tulane that was, ranked, uh, was second place in the American when the Lady Tigers beat them. Then the Chick-fil-A Outstanding Player of the Week. Well, it's that rock inside. Then a sit-down. Tyler Springs on Toyota Inside Access. We'll talk with the steady player on the outside, Ariel Wilson. And the AutoZone Road Ahead is a busy one. Stick around. We're just underway on the Melissa McFerrin TV Show. You're watching the Coach McFerrin TV Show. When the U of M women boarded the plane to go to uh, Greenville, North Carolina, take on ECU, you had a whole team. Everybody was healthy at that point. Jamira Schutz was about to play the game of her life. Williams was still healthy. And this one's going to end up being a toughie for you. 71-65. This was not the best game for your rock inside men's you do. We know that uh, when she scores big force inside along with a little bit of help from Elaine, a little bit of help from Kiki. We know we have a chance. We don't have to rely so much on our perimeter game. But Jamira lights it up in this game. And um, she was the best that she's been all year in this game. Very aggressive. But ECU is a difficult team to play against. I know that sounds crazy because their wins don't really show it. But they press and trap at the most unexpected times. Their goal is 26 to 30 turnovers a game. We had 22. That's fewer than anybody except UConn wow. on the year. And you had 18 assists in that game, too, which was impressive. You mentioned Davis is 
She had a season high of 17 in the game. I'm looking at Elena Davis right here, and I just want, really want to talk about her because she was critical in this game. She's getting more minutes now that we've had um, a couple injuries, and it's critical. Um, now that we're having to use some of our depth that we've talked about, Elena Davis, Julian McDonald, they're really being productive for us right now. And now I get to brag about the depth that we haven't always seen, but that now is giving us wins. Well, and I know that's a tough one on the, on the road, but you get a chance on February 15th to get even with East Carolina. So now you're home for the next couple of games. You're down some players because Schutz is going to get hurt. Down to seven, so you really have to be careful with the way you play this game. Fouls and minute distribution, and you're in pink for this one. And uh, you're going to come out, and, and really, you do a good job. Excellent defense. You forced 21 turnovers in this game. Well, absolutely. And honestly, we started the game make and miss. We were in a zone on a make because we were concerned about foul trouble, particularly on our post players against Kendry and Elliott, who's one of the best post players in the conference on the Tulsa team, but we did a great job, had no foul trouble early in the game. Um, again, Jazz Herndon just doing a great job of controlling the tempo of the game. We're getting a little bit loose there from the three-point line. You see Julianne McDonald right there. She gives us another three-point threat in addition to Madison Griggs. Tulsa tried to go some zone on us at different points in the game, and those two players really shot him out of it. Plus, we're getting, we may not be getting double digits, but we're getting eight or nine from Kiki. We're getting 11 from Jazz, we're getting eight or nine. And so we're spreading our scoring around. When you take Jamira out, that's a concern. We were able to put 63 points on the board, but their total of 44 is the real key for us being successful with this combination of players. And uh, I, 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 there's Madison Griggs. I don't know what you can say about her. She's got 63s already now for the year. She's 10 away from your record, but she's just a freshman. Well, we hope she breaks it. Um, uh, we hope that it just comes naturally throughout the course of, of the games when she's doing what she's doing. But obviously, she's a confident shooter. Era Wilson's shooting's getting better. And, and like I said, Julianne McDonald also has the ability to knock down some threes. 63-44. You held this team to 44 points. That was really an impressive win, I thought. It was. And we wanted to play man in that game the whole game. Played zone in the first half. Second half, we went all man. And um, as we get into the next game, as we're, as we're talking about our win against Tulane, we had to go man against them. So, um, yeah, well, seven let, players, let's play. Let, let's get into that game because <laughs> Tulane comes in second place in the AAC. I think if there were odds makers on this game, you'd be the underdogs. And you just take off right away, and there's Briggs again. But we lost the game at their place, and we were really disappointed. We played poorly. Our ball screen defense was poor in the first half against that, uh, against them in the in the first game. And I thought we really tidied that up. But we had to go to man because of the three point shooters. Now they actually went off from the three point line at a at a couple points during the game. We weren't happy about that. But Madison Griggs also goes off there. We have um, Dulcie comes back and absolutely has a great game. But. Again, I'm going to go back to Jazz Herndon. She did a great job in this game managing their press and at times just really fed the other the other players for layup. Seven points, seven assists, six rebounds, very active on defense. She's a lady who has so much speed, you think she's out of control, but she's not. Well, she's got a lot of speed. Um, sometimes uh, something might happen where she loses the handle or something, but more times than not, she's... I call her a human press breaker. She can break presses all by herself most of the time. Just an excellent game, inside and outside. Griggs had at least three threes now, 12 times this year. Yeah. And another double, double for your young lady inside. That's now tied for 21st all time in double doubles. That's it. In three quarters of a year. Uh, and, <laughs> and she's got a whole other one and a quarter years from right. you. Yeah, I mentioned before that we've been, that's the best move she made all night, just being really patient there. We've been trying to get her here for three years now. You can see yeah. why. We're only going to get her for junior and senior year, but um, she changes the game for us. But this was just a really great team win. We had some fatigue on us last night, particularly as we went into the fourth quarter. We gave up some threes. But when it mattered, when we needed to make plays, we made plays. And it was four or five different players that I, did it. I agree. It, they never took the lead. They made two runs in the fourth quarter on you. And they couldn't. And now... You are 
really making a statement, I think, to the entire league. I said we're busy. We're not kidding. When we come back, I sit down with Ariel Wilson, a freshman full of poise. You're watching the Coach McFerrin TV show. When you watch Ariel Wilson play, you can't believe she's a freshman. When you listen to her, you won't believe that either. Here's Tyler Springs. Ariel, you have played away from home a lot as an amateur. That sends you to foreign places like Belarus. What's it like for you to be playing abroad as a youngster? And how has that impacted your ability to come in and settle down in new surroundings here in Memphis? I think that those experiences kind of take away from the whole being at home thing. So when I was away, I didn't even really realize it because you have one focus and it's a bigger stage playing internationally. And they also warm you up to it because they kind of promote the provincial programs. So we'll be away for a weekend here and there. Then we'll be away for a week in the summer. And the time kind of goes on and eventually, um, I guess, like expands to maybe a full month away. And I think that just kind of having basketball day in and day out and having that focus and then bonding with the girls and that kind of um, reflects, I guess, how university is. So those experiences playing for my national team, playing and traveling and just constantly being a part of that and the culture, I guess, that it, it creates allows me to easily switch and transfer to how it is here at Memphis. We know you've played internationally, but what's been the team that you've represented for Canada on the highest level, and where are the places that you most remember traveling to? Highest level was cadet for the, so I played U16, and we qualified for Worlds, and that was in Argentina. But by far the best was Worlds, uh, which was in Belarus, and that was a completely different experience because I've never been over to Europe. It was a longer plane ride for sure, um, and I needed to get like an actual visa on my passport, so it was definitely a longer process to get into that country. Um, but it's completely different how it is from Canada or here because I've traveled to the States a whole lot for basketball. In terms of the recruitment process, we're curious to know, why did you choose Memphis? What appealed to you about coming here to play basketball? Definitely the people. I think the schools I did have were very different. So actually going um, and going on my officials was a really big part of choosing Memphis. And the coaches did a really good job in the fact that they wanted me. So I know that a lot of the other schools, it was, it was like, yes, we're recruiting you, yes, like, you know, we want you, but Memphis was like, we need you. Like, we really want you, we're invested in you. We see you as a person, a player, we know your goals, your future, and they were just so invested in that, and the girls were really on board with that too, and I thought that everyone clicked and really got along. That's probably the best part, is the competition, because as a freshman, I wasn't, I guess, expecting a whole lot, because I've heard you know, your freshman year is the longest, it's transition, you're getting used to things, you're, like, I'm obviously, I have Jazz and Jamira and Rudy when she was in that have, you know, been here, been playing in the AAC, which is definitely better competition, but in practice, they've, it's tough love, so they're not coaxing me, they want to, you know, make sure the team is where it needs to be, and so I think that from the start, my confidence has grown a lot more, and I'm able to be a point guard on the court and be able to talk to my teammates and just not be afraid of saying something or having my thoughts heard, controlling the temple, whatever it is. So I think just that as a freshman is huge because some people don't get that until their senior year. Ariel, thanks so much for your time. Thank you. Now I see why she never gets rattled. That's wisdom beyond her years. Uh, you see her thoughtful responses, and she's very thoughtful on the court. The one thing I will say I love about Ariel Wilson, she is not just a competitor. She really wants to do everything incredibly well, and it's, it's inside of her. Great competitor, 
great drill player, great teammate, great values for somebody that you want on your team. So while she's doing that on the outside, the Chick-fil-A player of this particular week is going to be Dulcie Fancom Mangiadu. 18 points, 12 rebounds against Tulsa. How does she answer that against Tulane, against the number two team in the conference? Only 15 and 11. That's pretty good stuff. That's pretty good stuff. And uh, those kind of showings are what we've come to expect from Dulcie. And if we don't, if, if it doesn't happen, we're like, Dulcie, what's wrong? <laughs> well, there's nothing wrong. She's just set a standard now, and it's going to be incredibly important that she keep that standard. You've got rocks inside. You've got rocks on the outside. That is going to make for a great foundation for the next couple of years. When we come back, a little inside access, a trip to Le Bonner. Stick around. You're watching the Coach McFerrin TV show. The University of Memphis believes in giving back to the community, including trips to Le Bonner. I learned some facts about like why the heart is like a stitch formation rather than just a normal heart and learned like the craftsmanship behind a lot of things and how basically how much care they give towards the kids and how much they try so hard to make the kids time here enjoyable. It just makes me look back and be somewhat grateful that even though I was here it wasn't for something as intense or as serious as some of these kids go through. So to be able to give them something that can make their day or like brighten up their week or whatever, it really means something to me. I think it, like, it can open a lot of our players' eyes to seeing how grateful we are and how thankful we should be to be able to play this sport because a lot of these kids don't have the ability to do that. I mean, it means a lot to me because being on both sides, I understand like their side, how scary it could be, and also having someone here that tell you it's going to be okay, and it means a lot. It's really amazing because he basically saved my life, so I really thank him a lot for that. I mean, it helps them and me and everyone realize that it's bigger than basketball and how blessed that we are. You're watching the Coach McFerrin TV Show. Coming up on the AutoZone Road Ahead, on the road at Wichita State, that is never easy. And then at home, that'll be a Saturday game against East Carolina. That is our Black History Month, very important day for our team, for our program. So we want everybody to come out um, to honor Black History Month. And we'll, so we'll see you on the 15th and right back here. Have a great week, everybody. Thanks for watching the Coach McFerrin TV show presented by Chick-fil-A. Eat more chicken. The show is also supported by AutoZone. For parts to helpful advice, AutoZone has everything you need to get in the zone. AutoZone, Subway, make it what you want. The Tennessee Lottery and your Memphis Toyota dealers. Toyota, let's go places. This copyrighted broadcast is an exclusive presentation of Learfield IMG College. Under the broadcasting rights granted by the University of Memphis, the use of this presentation is prohibited without the expressed written consent of the University of Memphis and Learfield IMG College. The preceding has been a Learfield IMG College presentation of the Tiger Sports Network.